we've got a lot to thank William Penny Brooks for in this town, and um, and one of the things we have got to thank him for is bringing all of you here today. And we've got some fantastic artists to uh, work for us this weekend. So, our first performance of M21 is Sean Bone, and Sean is there. And if we could follow Sean up to the square, Sean will be delivering psychosis belly. Thank you, Sean. Welcome to Psychosis Belly. Five different Olympic sports. 100 yards, target game, shot put and a jump. They're all very different to the original Olympic sports and they take something from them too. I do need someone to hold this scoreboard for me and then I also need the audience to give me scores based on how many points you think I deserve. The great thing about it is that most of, the, most of these art forms are usually very urban, they usually take place in cities, but here we are right in a small town, rural Shropshire, and yet we're having the same sort of live art that usually happens to take place in big cities, so it's brilliant to bring it to the countryside for a day or two. So three, two, one, when I raise my arm. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Depression hurdles. No, I can't do it. <laughs> it requires too much energy. I can't focus. I can't concentrate. Weight loss. Mind loss. Sleep loss. I just can't do it. Come on, I need you to cheer for me, to get me going. Okay. I, I really need some motivation. <laughs> Hurdles. Yeah. <laughs> I've had a special costume made up partly like a straight jacket. It's orange and, and purple. It's the, um, the, the, the colours that the Olympics, um, not, not the athletes, but the Olympic other people are, are wearing this, this summer. So that's who I am. That's what I'm doing in, the, in a nutshell. is completely valueless. Um, there's nothing on its own, but it gives value to others. And in that sense, I think the baton in a relay race was quite a nice comparison. Um, so the guys are running, but it's not a relay race without the baton. And just to give you an extra bit of quirky absurdity, um, I decided the guys should wear suits, because normally when I perform, I almost always wear business suits. So, um, so I turn it around, get the guys in suits, add myself in sports gear, which I never ever wear in real life, and <laughs> fancy. That's a good tip. Hello, Hello. Hello. Hello.
My piece of work is called Training to Be Me, Part 2. Performance was stuck in various places that have got historical um, content in much of my work. So there was the church that's very connected to disabled people, um, connected both in um, making money and also in um, containers. Then we went to the Guild Hall, uh, where there are upstairs there, there are stocks, and there's also like a kind of whipping post where people were chained. So obviously anybody going outside of society's norms, yeah. people were punished because they had a cognitive difference, um, uh, punished because they had psychological difference, punished because they had physical difference. I say I'm a disabled person because I'm disabled by a society that isn't made to suit me. I believe in Karl Marx's from each according to his ability to each according to his need. I think we should share the wealth. We then went on to St. Mildeberg's well. St. Mildeberg was part of a rich family and um, she became, she was part of an abbess at the, um, um, the convent. But it was said that she cured people, that's what the well was about. Um, particular people with visual and um, impairment. And if I am actually cured of my visual difference, I'm going to sue much when lock and dash. I thought it was some sort of healing something, I don't know what I thought. Um, you don't know. No, because it's sort of Oh, I see. So it's When we were at the Guildhall, I felt I was going to cry because I thought about all the people like me who'd been there, who'd been punished. When I was at the well, um, I actually felt the support of other disabled people because often disabled people are actually taken to places like that. We're told that we lack, we're told that we don't um, you know, come up to a standard rather than celebrating that we are people of difference and we can liberate the world. Um, we then went on to Asheville Hall which is where um, there was a plaque and it talks about the naked beggars. At one time it was called St John's Hospital. It was a kind of asylum, but I think would be very much 
like a kind of warehouse. It was where you would put people who, again, not only didn't fit in, but didn't do their, you know, it's all right to do beggary as long as you don't upset the, you know, the normal people too much. Uh, and the film was very much, if you notice, the film was both about inside my home and also I was outside, but both publicly and privately, your life is shaped by fitting in to the role that capitalism assigns. And I have enjoyed it very much. I, 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 I was a bit kind of anxious about it, but it was very good. I, I liked the procession, and I liked the way that people sat with the film, because I felt with the film that when you know the film is slow and repetitive, which is to do with what life is like, so I felt that people also um, had the experience of that themselves in sitting there and it going on and on. Denise Lee, and this is my husband and accompanist, Stefan Andrusishan. Uh -huh. And um, Stefan is a classical accordionist, um, a proper Russian built uh, bayan, which is made primarily of wood and wax <laughs> and um, reeds, proper Russian made reeds. So it's a very, it's almost like um, a portable organ. chamber organ and we use it to great effect with early music especially which we're, we're doing a little early music tonight. People think that Bayan is only for folk music um, but uh, I'd like to demonstrate to people that it's possible to to use the bayan in, in classical music as well as folk it's you know it's, it's a very capable instrument there are lots of things that it can do it's been selected quite carefully by the animator we gave him a, a list of pieces which we felt would work in this setting and he then went away listened to them and decided which pieces he could make work the best. So the animation is totally down to him and the, the music is, is our field basically. And it's hopefully a happy marriage. Welcome, Land Rovers, Abraham Men, Palliards, Clapper Dudgeons, Whipjacks, Dummers, Files, Dunnikers, Cursitors, Rovers Men. Those of you whose land and rights have been expropriated, those of you whose commons have been enclosed and are now landless and rogue, those of you who have lost the right to graze your pigs in Sherlock Woods, those of you whose children have been spirited away to the plantations of the West Indies never to return. Those of you who have spilled your blood to defend the commons, filling ditches, cutting hedges. Those of you who have built your squatter cottages. I welcome you all. The piece is called The Politics of Confinement. So it's about <laughs> the land being enclosed and that's a big thing that's happened in this country, all over the world, but it was about what's happened in this country in particularly the 15th, 16th, 17th centuries, when so many people were pushed off the land. And also then bringing it here to the 21st century, what happened in this very field where the fences were put up for what was once just a big open field and people were enclosed in these little tramways. And the suit, I think, I think straw is so basic, it's like straw and hay, what is it? It's just 
grass, it's plants, it's the basic thing that you put animals on, you can roof your house with. It's like the building block of life. So I thought I would cover a suit with straw, then I'd be like a part of the land. This field, this ancient land was a playground, a passageway, a picnic place for all of Wenlock. Then the plague of 2001 arrived on the land, that pestilence led by greed, that foot and mouth. This countryside was closed, the footpath closed, to stop the spread of the pox. But then our great leader, Tony Blair, he declared, the countryside is open, the footpaths are open. These tramway fences here and on Wenlock Edge these stockade fences, these muddy pestilent sores, they were put down to open up the countryside. But they closed us out to walk between two lines of wire, to be forced onto a stinky muddy track instead of roaming free. It's not a pleasure, that walk, but to be herded by the will of the landowner and the lords of the manor. On what of our future? Will our children feel free to walk in this field, or will they choose to walk through mud and dog shit? That is my question. Thank you. And this was dedicated to all the people who are fighting, people like the MSF in Brazil, who are the landless peasants movement, who are fighting to take land. Thank you. painting all my life. I think I was probably drawing um, whilst I was still in my mother's womb. So I think I came out with a paintbrush in my me, in me hand or in my mouth somewhere. But professionally I've been painting since uh, for about 25 years. The first collection of portraits that I did, they were of uh, famous and, and up-and-coming, emerging uh, disabled artists. So amongst, amongst that collection, there was Tony Heaton, there was uh, Julie McNamara, Matt Fraser. There was 10 of them all together, so that's just a few. of the festival um, are that, um, that we've got such a great uh, um, diversity in terms of the in terms of the artworks that have been produced really I think I think there seems to be something for, for everyone really and I think the fact that that the artists that have been involved are very um, you know sort of top of their game if you like so I think that's you, you know, and the, and the, the fact that um, because they're top of their game, that they're being seen by, by lots of people in such a small space. In a period of hiding, people feel trapped in a life bound by rules and external expectations. To be classified as a disabled person, the government is implying that you cannot contribute to society, that you have nothing to offer. Whilst at the same time, the same government might decide you are not worthy of support, you are too capable. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Much Wenlock has uh, a background of inviting people with disabilities to do performance um, at, at other times. So we um, are uh, we're happy to have 
all sorts of different types of art events in Much Wentworth. And we've got several local groups with learning disabilities that do uh, art, theatre performance for us uh, at other festivals. Festival Dash. Has it been good? It's a new festival. Has it been good? Um, have you made new friends? So it's been really, really good today. It's been fantastic. And I, I love performing. It's been amazing. I'm really passionate about it. It's been fantastic. We've got international sign language and British sign language. Are they different or are they the same? Do you think we can communicate together? They're very different. He's saying it is a different communication style. So, do you think it's possible to communicate between international sign language and BSL? It's possible. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. How? How, How can we do it? So, if we sign SSE and BSL, and we kind of combine them together, it will be almost like international sign language. I think we can do it. Thank you very much. Oh, it was great to see you. My name's Jane, I live in Much Wenlock. I'm actually here because I make glass, I'm selling my glass today. And I think things like this are really wonderful. To have people wandering around, laughing, enjoying themselves. It's beautiful, thank you. <laughs> this is the book that codifies just how mad we are. When you look up in it, it's got all the different entries just saying what is wrong with you. <laughs> There's a new copy that the Americans are currently working on, DSM-5 which is going to have even more illnesses to <laughs> choose from. I'm going to leap off it while blindfolded. <laughs> Once I've put the blindfold on, I'm not before because otherwise I'll be able to see you doing it. You're going to draw a circle. Yesterday the circle was over there. So don't draw it over there because I know where that one is. So you need to draw a circle anywhere else around me. I'm going to, ask, I'm going to put my blindfold on. And then I'm going to ask the person with the piece of chalk to draw a circle somewhere on the ground, anywhere around me. Don't tell me where you are. Direction it's in. We're going to see if I can score better than I did last time. I scored about 10 points for this. So I think it's going to be somewhere in this area around here. So I'm going to leap in this area. No. Are you ready? Three, no. two, one. one. <laughs> Ooh. Do I score any points for this? Yeah. 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 50. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay.
That looks quite a good shot, but. <laughs> so I'm going to come to the edge of the pavement. I'm going to put the shot over your heads. I'm going to aim just to the left of where that person is standing right by the clock tower. So I hope this doesn't hit you. Get dark if it does. Three, two, one. Today, 3,200. I did indeed do better. I just wanted to also break the uh, London Olympic Games and Paralympic Games Act to 2006 <laughs> by saying <laughs> Olympic gold, 2012 silver races. I think that's probably broken it enough and it's recorded on CCTV. <laughs> and Thank you everyone, and I hope you've had a good time, or an interesting time. If it wasn't good, that doesn't matter. If it was interesting, that was good, better. And I hope we all meet up again somewhere. Thank you.